Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Fixer Med, and welcome to my High Yield Biochemistry Review Series for the USMLE Step 1, NBME CBSE, and NBME CAS examinations. This will be part five in a multi-part video series covering the entire discipline of the biochemistry unit for these examinations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off this lesson by talking about fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis is a biosynthetic process that takes place in the cytoplasm of cells, leading to the production of long chain fatty acids. The primary building blocks for this process are acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA. These substrates undergo a series of enzymatic reactions catalyzed by the fatty acid synthase complex, resulting in the elongation of the fatty acid chain. The process involves condensation reduction, dehydration, and a final reduction step, ultimately yielding palmitate, a 16-carbon saturated fatty acid. Fatty acid synthesis is regulated by the rate-limiting enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase, also known as ACC, and its end product, palmitate, serves as a precursor for the synthesis of more complex lipids or can be stored away as triglycerides. This regulation of this process is associated with metabolic disorders, emphasizing its significance in cellular metabolism. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some more points about fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis normally occurs in the cytoplasm of cells, contrasting with fatty acid oxidation, which takes place in the mitochondria. The main substrates for fatty acid synthesis are acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is derived from carbohydrates through glycolysis or from ketogenic amino acids, while malonyl-CoA is generated from acetyl-CoA by acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Uh, fatty acid synthesis involves a multi-enzyme complex known as fatty acid synthase. This complex is responsible for catalyzing the various reactions required for fatty acid chain elongation. Uh, fatty acids are built through a repetitive process of adding two carbon units, acetyl groups, to the growing fatty acid chain. This process involves condensation, reduction, dehydration, and a second reduction step. The rate-limiting step of fatty acid synthesis is the conversion of acetyl-CoA to malonyl-CoA by ACC. This enzyme is regulated by hormonal signals with insulin promoting its activation and glucagon inhibiting it. Fatty acid synthesis requires equivalence in the form of NADPH. NADPH is utilized during the reduction steps of fatty acid synthesis and is often generated through the pentose phosphate pathway. The end product of fatty acid synthesis is palmitate, a 16 carbon saturated fatty acid. Palmitate can serve as a precursor for the synthesis of various complex lipids. Once synthesized, fatty acids are often converted into triglycerides for storage or transported in the bloodstream bound to albumin. Fatty acid synthesis and oxidation are reciprocally reg regulated. Malonyl-CoA, an intermediate in fatty acid synthesis, inhibits carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, CPT1, thus reducing fatty acid oxidation. Dysregulation of fatty acid synthesis can be associated with metabolic disorders such as obesity and insulin resistance. Inhibitors of fatty acid synthesis are being explored as potential targets for anti-cancer therapies. All right. As always, memorize this pathway, use Anki, print this slide out, do whatever to memorize this pathway, extremely high yield. You'll get a lot of points for knowing these steps and what inhibits them and if you can recall everything I just talked about, you should be good for fatty acid synthesis. Moving on, fatty acid breakdown. Fatty acid breakdown, also known as beta oxidation, is the catabolic process that occurs in mitochondria, leading to the degradation of fatty acids for energy production. During beta oxidation, fatty acids are sequentially cleaved into two carbon acetyl-CoA units. The process involves a series of enzymatic reactions including oxidation, hydration, and dialysis. Acetyl-CoA generated from beta oxidation enters the citric acid cycle to produce energy through oxidative phosphorylation. Beta oxidation is a crucial mechanism for energy release, especially during periods of fasting or increased energy demand. 
The rate of beta oxidation is regulated by factors such as hormonal signals and substrate availability. Deficiencies in beta oxidation enzymes can lead to metabolic disorders characterized by impaired fatty acid breakdown and energy production. As always, I'm gonna give you guys another rundown for your recall style. So beta oxidation takes place in the mitochondria of cells. As stated earlier, uh, in contrast to fatty acid synthesis, that occurs in the cytoplasm. Uh, the main substrates are fatty acids, typically long chain fatty acids for beta oxidation. They're broken down into acetyl-CoA units. Beta oxidation involves four key enzymatic steps, oxidation, hydration, oxidation, and dialysis. These steps are repeated for each two carbon unit in the fatty acid chain. The primary goal of beta oxidation is to generate acetyl-CoA, which can then enter the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, to produce energy through oxidative phosphorylation. Acetyl-CoA produced during beta oxidation is a central metabolite that links various metabolic pathways, including the citric acid cycle and ketogenesis. The rate of beta oxidation is regulated by hormonal signals and substrate availability. For instance, Increased levels of glucagon and decreased insulin can enhance beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is an efficient process for energy production. Each round of beta oxidation generates one molecule of acetyl-CoA, FADH2, and NADH. These can contribute to ATP production through oxidative phosphorylation. Excessive beta oxidation, especially during fasting or low carbohydrate availability, can lead to the production of ketone bodies, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate in the liver. Disorders in beta-oxidation enzymes can result in metabolic diseases such as fatty acid oxidation disorders leading to symptoms like hypoglycemia and muscle weakness. Fatty acid oxidation disorders can also be represented by FAODS on a question. Make sure you know that. Uh, fatty acids need to be transported into the mitochondria for beta oxidation. This is facilitated by the carnitine shuttle and deficiencies in carnitine or carnitine palmitoyl transferase can impact beta oxidation. As always, memorize this pathway, use Anki, print the slide out, do whatever to memorize this pathway, extremely high yield, write it out, do whatever you have to do to memorize this thing. All right, let's move on to NBME style questions. So we have a neonate with a defect in fatty acid oxidation, undergoes a physical exam that shows no abnormalities. What is the next best step in diagnosis? I'll give you guys a few seconds to choose your answer here, then move on. I think I gave you guys enough time. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, if you need more time, please be sure to pause the video right now. All right, moving on. The key to the correct answer lies in understanding the role of acetyl carnitines in fatty acid oxidation. Acetyl carnitines are produced during the movement of fatty acids from the cytosol to the mitochondria via the carnitine shuttle. Low acetyl carnitine level suggests carnitine deficiency while normal levels suggest medium or long chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, also known as MCAD or LCAD deficiency. Therefore, the answer in this case is B, check serum acyl carnitine concentrations. All right, let's go ahead and explain why the other answer choices are incorrect. <clears throat> a, perform a genetic test to identify the specific fatty acid oxidation enzyme deficiency. While genetic testing may eventually be necessary, it is not the next best step. Checking serum acyl carnitine concentrations provides more immediate information about the current status of fatty acid oxidation. C. Conduct a liver biopsy to assess hepatic function. A liver biopsy is not the most direct and specific test for fatty acid oxidation disorders. Checking serum acyl carnitine concentrations is a more targeted approach. D. Measure serum ketone levels and glucose concentrations. 
This choice is related to the downstream effects of fatty acid oxidation but, not, but does not directly assess the specific enzyme deficiency. Checking serum acylcarnitine concentrations provides a more focused diagnostic step in this context. All right, let's move on to the next question. So we have a 32-year-old male that presents with recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia and hepatomegaly. Laboratory tests reveal elevated serum triglycerides. Genetic testing reveals a mutation in the acetyl-CoA carboxylase gene. What is the most likely explanation for this patient's symptoms? All right, give you guys a few more seconds, then I'm going to move on. Moving on now, if you need more time, pause the video. All right, the patient's symptoms, including hypoglycemia and hepatomegaly, along with elevated serum triglycerides, are indicative of a metabolic disorder related to increased fatty acid synthesis. A mutation in the ACC gene, a key enzyme in fatty acid synthesis, would lead to enhanced lipogenesis and triglyceride production. This condition is known as lipodystrophy or hypertriglyceridemia. Therefore, the answer for this question is B, enhanced fatty acid synthesis. See why the other answer choices are incorrect? The incorrect answer choices can be explained as follows. Uh, increased fatty acid breakdown, beta oxidation. This is unlikely as the symptoms point towards excessive fatty acid synthesis, not breakdown. C, defective carnitine shuttle. The carnitine shuttle is associated with fatty acid breakdown, beta oxidation. A defect in this shuttle would lead to impaired beta oxidation, not enhanced fatty acid synthesis. D, impaired citric acid cycle. While the citric acid cycle is downstream of fatty acid breakdown, impaired citric acid cycle alone is less likely to cause the specific symptoms described in the vignette. So none of the other answer choices really explain enhanced fatty acid synthesis. Therefore, they're all incorrect here. Let's move on to the next question. We have a 25 year old female athlete that presents with fatigue and muscle weakness during prolonged exercise. She repeats, she reports avoiding meals before training sessions. Laboratory tests show low levels of serum ketones. Which of the following enzymes is most likely affected in this patient? Give you guys a few more seconds and then I'm going to move on. Moving on now. If you need to pause the video, but spoke a little too late there, it's okay. Um, explanation. The patient's symptoms, particularly fatigue and mus muscle weakness during prolonged exercise along with low serum ketones suggests a deficiency in beta oxidation. CPT1 is a crucial enzyme in the carnitine shuttle, facilitating the entry of fatty acids into the mitochondria for beta oxidation. A defect in CPT1 would lead to impaired fatty acid breakdown and reduced ketone body production. Therefore, the answer is B, CPT1. Let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. Uh, A, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, ACC. ACC is involved in fatty acid synthesis, not breakdown. C, fatty acid synthase. Fatty acid synthase is responsible for fatty acid synthesis, not beta oxidation. D, malonyl-CoA decarboxylase. This enzyme is not a well-known component of beta oxidation, and its deficiency is not commonly associated with the symptoms described in the vignette. Now, that will be the end of the video for fatty acid synthesis and fatty acid breakdown, also known as beta oxidation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. As always, this is Fixer Med signing off. Hope you guys have a great day. See you guys in the next part. Goodbye.